Hey everybody, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. It's Casual Friday. That's why we're not in tuxes. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Hello. I'm James. What up? Casual Friday. It doesn't it's been a long week, Andrew. Yes, it has. Yeah, on both of our ends, it's been a very long week, lots of stuff going on. Um, but the week's finally winding down. Um, I don't know about you, but Spider-Verse is happening for me tonight. Uh, I can't, I, I really want to see it. I can't see it. Uh, I can't wait to hear it. I think Rob saw it last night, Thursday night. I can't wait to see it. It's supposed to be like the greatest movie ever made. I don't know if I believe that. I think it's probably the second best movie ever made, but was, I'm really excited. I love, I love the first one mm -hmm. and it looks, this one looks great. So yeah, man, I, let me know how it is. Enjoy it. Maybe you could do a, like a out of theater review or something. Um, so I'm gonna try to like, like you know, just for me or whatever. I don't know. Oh, there you go. I was, I was like, why is this so dim? You looked like Palpatine's hologram before. <laughs> uh, Jedi, blah blah blah. I returned. That's my Palpatine. I, I'm known for my Palpatine. You. That's why we started uh, Rebels Gone Podcast in the first exactly, place. Because I was like, hey, I can do a Palpatine better than Ian McDermott. <laughs> Well, speaking of Spider-Verse, um, it's kind of a special casual Friday today. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. It is, because you got to try something, James, that we have been uh, doing or talking about, rather, on this channel for a long time, and that is Marvel United, the yeah. board game. My favorite yeah. board game. <sighs> you got to finally try it. I um, finally played it, yeah. You I and Aaron. Yeah. yeah, my wife. Yeah, we both played it. And uh, so I didn't know anything about that. You got this game for your birthday like 4,000 years ago, if, like a few years ago. I don't can't remember. You called me like, look at, or I called you. And it was a FaceTime. You're like, look at this game. And I thought the artwork was cool, but I was also like, I don't play a lot of games. Like I play like Mario Kart Monopoly. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I play like Mario Kart Monopoly, things like that. Um, I, I don't really know how to get in. Like I bought this i can't remember what it was i bought a game that was a little bit different from those and i couldn't figure out how to play it so you're like all obsessed with this game and you've done videos on the game and i remember you came you're like hey can i do a video on marvel united and i'm like yeah sure <laughs> why not and then yeah and then you you and, and when you came over you came over a little while ago and i was secretly hoping you would bring it and you did uh, and you brought like this massive game board for it as well. And I, I, I didn't know what I was. Honestly, I watch your videos, but they make zero sense to me at all. So again, I didn't know what I was in for. And you're not what... just talking about my Marvel United videos. Just no, anything exactly. where I get on camera and speak. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he, like, see, you, like, I don't even think Succession's a real show. But like, so, <laughs> so I was like, I, I didn't know what I was in for when you pulled this game out. And I was like, oh, here we, and you're like, Aaron can play it. I was like, Aaron. And Aaron, my wife, she likes Marvel more than I like. I'm pretty sure she likes like those movies more than I do. Not that it's, I mean, comics and everything, but, but she likes the movies more than I do. I'm pretty certain of that. Not that I don't like them. I just, she's always like, I really like that. I'm like, oh, man, it was good. So, I, but I, but the game, I'm like, oh man, if this game is uber nerdy, she is out. Like, she is out if it's uber nerdy. And and I saw that. And I think the artwork is cool. Like I said, I thought the pieces were really cool. And uh, and then you describe the game, and I, I, I we both equally I think had a blast because we played it. I don't know how long you normally play it or you thought we would play it, but I think we played it significantly longer than we probably should have because we watched the movie after it got really late. <laughs> so I, I think that says something for the game itself. Yeah, and that's a pattern that I have found. I mean, I'm the guy in my friend group who has always gone for like weird board games right and then so inevitably i always was the guy who's like no trust me look let me show you how it works blah, blah, blah. and then i get people looking at me like i'm an alien and yeah. you know it's, it always ends poorly with marvel united every single batch of friends that i have shown it to i have i get the same reaction where i have people look at it and they kind of raise an eyebrow they go oh what's this why is the board so big what's going on the board is insane <laughs> the board it's massive it's a play mat uh, you can play Twister on it, but it's necessary. <laughs> um, and by the time where, and this is with every group of people I've shown it to, by the time 20 minutes has passed, everybody is locked in. Everybody has 
almost finished a game or if not finished. And by the time a first game is finished, it's always the same reaction. It's like, okay, let's try again. And at that point, the ball was rolling. I think what, what really shows how good the game is and how fun it is for, for me, I think this was when like the first game was fun, but it was kind of like you're learning the ropes and who do you pick as a villain for the first game? I always go with red skull. He's the best. Red skull, right. Yeah. Yeah. It was red skull. So you go over red skull. I'm like, fine, fine, whatever. And then I'm like, we got to do saber tooth. Cause he's one of my favorites. And you're like, Ugh. and I'm like, let's do saber tooth. And saber tooth was impossible. Like we, we lost pretty fast. I, I think we lost pretty fast. And then what showed how much, how good the game is though, is usually when something is that complicated, like not complicated, uh, difficult you kind of like screw this i'm done with it like you know mm-hmm. video games i'm like that. i'm like this game's like ba- like battle to ninja turtles underwater not happening i'm done with this but this game was like we gotta do it again we gotta be saber to uh-huh. and we kept doing it like morons and we, ne- we never got there <laughs> we never beat saber Tooth, i don't think we got better at it and i think that's what showed but then it started getting late so then we went with the ultron after but like i think that's what shows how much fun this game was and how anybody can play it is like the fact that you lose so poor like bad like we got decimated by saber tooth yeah. but it was still so much fun they were like we gotta run it again we're gonna <laughs> get him and you're like we're not gonna get him like we're gonna get him and we ultimately never did and that, that's just like that shows how much fun this game is it's it comes down to two things where i i think anyway i think it's a the the quickness of it because a yeah. full game is over in like less than an hour yeah, like maybe 45 minutes if you're really stretching it out. And B, it's uh, it's so plug and play. Uh, it's got that nature of like, okay, we lost the Sabretooth this time, but maybe it's because I was playing as Beast. What happens if I play as Jean Grey? I think this time with Jean Grey, I can kick his ass. And all of a sudden, it turns into this thing where like two hours have gone by and you're like trying every character. Uh, and it's it's a time sink, but in the best possible way. And I love just watching the effect that has on everybody that I introduce it to, because it's always the same kind of magic of like, Hmm, what did, what did you bring now, Andrew? What is this? We all know what happened last time with your stupid Cthulhu game, whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh my God, we have to be juggernaut. You've never brought a bad game over though. You brought the house. What's that one called? The haunted house. Ah, betrayal at house on the hill. That's yeah. That one's. Really, yeah. I've almost bought that one a bunch of times. Your games are a little pricey for for my budget, but but like that one was really fun. Die Hard was a great game. I want to play that one again. I think that one one that I need to be a little bit more sober. But that one was a lot of fun. It was also like one in the morning when we started playing. It. Yeah, that one was really. That one was cool and seemed inventive. I own the Jaws board game. I've never played it. You have to come over. We have to play it. I don't think it's nearly as good as any of these because I bought it. I just find like I buy back. I love Jaws though. And I was like, I just wanted it. Um, and then you brought, is that all you brought? I think you brought something. But anyway, those are like the ones that have stood out to me. But this one, um, and I, the, the Haunted House one was a really fun. Mm-hmm. But I thought this one trumped it all. And it was just, I don't know. And the fact that it's like, like you said, a short, which is really important because then you could play it multiple times because when a game's too long, you you know, you play it once, you're like, ah, I spent all that time doing that. That's, but it was nice. And, if, and it it was short, but it felt, it felt sh- short. That's not a negative. Like it felt like it was a good amount of time where you're like, that was satisfying On to the next one. And it, and, and you could play, like we could play it four or five times or whatever it was. And still have time to barely watch a movie after, but like you could do that, and that's yeah, that really added to it. Because if it, like you said, if it would have gone on for too long, which is what my first impression of it was, and mm-hmm. all your videos on the Kickstarter, I'm like, is this like a marathon that takes? Is this like risk <laughs> where you're playing it for like a week? Like I, that's my thought though. Is I was like, oh god, these good because you like long movies, long games. You're like, I got like you're like I'm playing Zelda and I'm gonna find every hidden treasure, and I'm like I'm gonna get to the end of the game. Like we have very different uh, goals. <laughs> yes. But Aaron's like you though. She's like we play. Like I will play Mario, like a Mario game. I my goal is to get to the princess and her, and then I give it to her, and then her goal is to get all the secrets. Because I'm not a, a dude, I was born playing Donkey Kong. You get the prince. You get Paul. You get it at the end. That's the goal, and that's this game. How it kind of encompasses all that in a very short period of time. So I was surprised that you had a game. That was so short and you loved it so much. 
And it's deceiving because, it, like you said, I bring this out and you're like, why are you covering my whole table with this massive? And my table's big. Yeah. You, do, you don't have a small table. Like Erin runs her business on that table. That's a yeah. huge table. And then I bring out this neoprene monstrosity and you're like, what are you doing here? And when, I'm like, oh, trust me. When I saw it rolled up, I'm like, did he bring a area rug? Why did he bring an area rug to my house? You're only going to be here for like, what, uh, 18 hours why are you bringing an area rug and you're and then i remember you had the game out and i was like what's that you're like that's the board like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about it's uh, but honestly uh, i haven't bought it yet because i'm cheap but i i keep looking at it and i'm I, but here's the thing i haven't bought it for a few reasons one i have a an eight month old but the mm-hmm. other reason is is because like um, I watch your videos and there's way too many expansions. And I feel like I like I showed you the one I want to get. I want to get that Spider-Man expansion, which is available and yes. not and not too pricey. I think it's gone up a little bit since I sent it to you. So that's what I want to get. But I have to ask you a few more questions because I know there's a lot of expansions, but I like what I like, and Spider-Man is obviously my favorite. I love the Incredible Hulk also. So like and a lot of the expansions you like I can't get over how difficult they are to find and then the ones that are easy to find i the, i guess the one slight with this game is they're just not they're not affordable no they're not that's the that's the sad thing is that because this game uh, this game has had two seasons that have come out and the third one is coming out um and every one of them has been a kickstarter campaign so the the double-edged sword of it is yeah you get this amazing game that everybody can go to toys r us and buy right now if they want no, except, except the americans <laughs> uh, but the downside is the meat of it really comes from the expansions and the expansions are 99 percent kickstarter only so what happens is you get this giant wave of people selling them on the secondary market and of course they mark it up because there's all this demand and no supply. Like there's an expansion. There's a few expansions I didn't get just because like money wise, I was like, I'm not going to get everything I can't. And one of them was the the Sentinels. Right. And I'm like, those are nice. So I've been trying to find them, but you know, nobody is charging less than $90 for it. And that's 90 us plus shipping. So it's like, I'm, I'm satisfied with the fact that I'm never going to own the Sentinels box. Like I get it, but for me, it was a dangerous rabbit hole to go down because the nature of this game, as you and Aaron learned, was every time you plug in a new villain, it's a whole new game. Yeah. And all of a sudden, your brain starts firing on a lot of cylinders and you think like, oh my God, what would this villain do? How does it work when it's this person and this person? You get three villains in this box. If you buy the Spider-Man box, it gives you one more. It gives you Green Goblin. So I was fortunate enough to kind of hop on that Kickstarter bandwagon because, and I brought these here to show for reference, when you get the Kickstarter campaign, the extras they give you come in giant boxes. Oh, wow. This is the extras. This is season one's extra box. And like, there's so many more heroes and villains. Rhino is Oh, what? He's just as hard as Sabretooth, man. I think I've beaten him once. Rhino is like 10 levels of hard. Uh, My boy, Big Willie Fisk is in here. He's very difficult too. Um, and that's like, that's the season one box. Let me see. I can't even lift the season two promo box with one hand, but it's even bigger than that. That's the season two. And the season three box is going to be even bigger because there's, uh, more characters that come just, and this is just the Kickstarter promos and like, not to mention all the expansions. I gotta ask you a, a newbie question. Yeah. Um, because you keep saying seasons, what does seasons mean? It's essentially there was a first season that was mostly just Avengers characters. That was the, uh, hold on, bear with me. That was this. Yeah. Right. That's the very first one. Uh, So this one really tried to capitalize on like, okay, the MCU is hot. So let's get all the Avengers. Let's get all the characters from, I think phase three was out at the time. So, you know, all the Thor Ragnarok people, all the Guardians of the Galaxy people, let's get all that. And then they left out every, x-men character so they did another run next year of a full like core box game plus a whole bunch of stuff plus expansions and expansions and expansions of just x-men characters 
And that's what this was. That was season two. As you can see, it's just this one box alone. It's enough to keep you busy for years and years. And then the third season, which is um, coming out, well, it's already finished its campaign, mm -hmm. uh, as you've seen on the channel, and uh, we will be receiving it in the mail if all goes well next March. Uh, the theme of that one was the multiverse, but really it was just sort of uh, throwing in all the characters we still didn't have yet, right? And uh, so you've got people like Galactus coming. I mean, you've all seen the videos about it. And there's still so many that people are clamoring for that, I don't know if a season four is happening, but like it could be done. In fact, you know, to jump to tease ahead a little bit, that's one of the videos that I have made that is coming up within the next few months is a hypothetical season four. Who's left? What would it look like? So the seasons are basically just like the expansions. Like they're just expansion packs. Like here's an expansion Kind of, here's kind of. Not, not one expansion. Like a season is a core box roughly six to nine expansion boxes oh. and then one of those giant boxes so basically so wait wait so if i was like so let's say hypothetically let's say all of the seasons were in walmart tomorrow right yeah and i walked into walmart and i look at and i look at the, the first one right and i'm like i don't really want to be iron man and captain america mm -hmm. but then i see the second box and i'm like who's in the second box like those are all the x-men so Wolverine. Yeah, perfect, because that's yeah. exactly what I would. This is this is actually true. If I walked in and you put the first box beside an X Men box, a hundred times out of a hundred times, I'm going with the X Men box first. Is that could I could I play the game without going ever getting that first box? Yes, hypothetically. Yeah, because yeah, the core boxes give you everything you need to play. Oh, uh, so season is base is is like a it's like a sequel. It's like here's the sequel. Yeah, here's so it's been off. Every okay. season All is right. built on the foundation of one core box, yeah. uh, which and the two that I brought to your house were the two core boxes that we've gotten so far. Oh, and then, that, okay. Yeah, and then they slap the giant Kickstarter boxes that I just showed you on top of that to say thanks for you know committing to our Kickstarter campaign. Here's a million characters, and then there's the smaller expansions that go on top of that. That's one whole season. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's insane. That's really cool. <laughs> Cause I like I said like I'm looking, um, I I I I would get the the first season one off because that's the the most available one I could find, and I get a combo with the Spider Man one, which is has everybody that I want. <laughs> I like that. I was like, I want everyone in this one, but I want the I would love the saber. I thought the saber tooth one was so much. The I and you said Rhino. Rhino is one of my favorite characters. I think that would be like those ones were. Um, I think the style of gameplay for Sabretooth was my favorite of the three that we did. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we kicked Ultron's, Ultron's butt, so I did like the Ultron one a lot. But I think the, the Sabretooth one, when you described it to us at the beginning, I, I was kind of zeroed in on it right away. Not just because I love Sabretooth and all that, but because you're like, he's hunting you. I'm like, I'm in. Let's go. Yeah. And I really like this. It was really hard, so that was frustrating. But like I said, it was still fun. So I, he was my favorite of the three villains that we played, I think, just because the idea that he's coming after you and he picked one. It just, it's so, the game is way more creative than I thought. It is. The design But simplistic, but very, very simple. So I got to add that. Like, it's very creative. And then they do it in a way where we understood it in no, I think in no time, like in no time at all. We're like, right, okay, we're in. Yeah. They, somehow they found that sweet spot of like, this is so simple. It's literally these three symbols. And once you learn what they mean, like you are, you're good to go. You can hit the ground running. They found that sweet spot of like that simplicity, but, and that's why I always go with Red Skull first, because it's like, he is the basic, most vanilla villain you could get. And then naturally the players all start asking questions. Well, what happens if a villain does this instead? Well, here's Bullseye. He does exactly what you just asked, right? So it turns into this fun dynamic of just experimenting and then all the combinations with all the heroes, because there are mm -hmm. obviously way more heroes than villains because they're easier to design. So you turn this into this infinite piece of clockwork that just like the amount of combinations you can create is insane. That's why every time I play it, just to amuse myself, because I love it this way, is I do it randomly. I just, I have like 
a whole list of everybody and they're all numbered. So I just do a random number generator and it's like, okay, hero number 44 and 100 are going to fight villain number 12. And then it's like, oh, wow, Yondu and Wasp versus Venom. Let's see what that's going to look like. And it just creates these pairings that you would never expect and never see anywhere else. And it's tons of fun that way. Okay, I got to ask you a question. Are who of these characters is uh I know what I know I'm gonna add the Hulk in here, even though I know the Hulk's not gonna win this. Yeah. Which of these characters is would you use uh the most? Is Venom a villain? He's both. He's a villain and a hero. Like in separate seasons or in the same season? In the same season. How does that work? Uh well, do you remember there was the purple, the purple one? characters, yeah. yeah, those are anti-heroes. The first season, they actually didn't have purple. They didn't think of it yet. So they actually give you two Venom miniatures, a blue one and a red one. All right. So, okay, Spider-Man, naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, is Punisher in there? Yep. Punisher, Venom, Wolverine, Hulk. Punisher, Venom, Wolverine. Hulk, who's the strongest? Daredevil, who's the strongest? Go. So you went Punisher, Venom, Wolverine, Hulk, Daredevil. Did you also Spider include Spider-Man? Oh, Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. But Spider-Man, I feel like Spider-Man's a cop-out, but I'm going to go Spider-Man and then Daredevil also. I mean, see, that's the thing. They all play so differently. Hulk has the most attack cards, mm -hmm. but... He was my first one. He was your first one, but like, remember what a disadvantage you were at when you had to yes. use non-attacks? And that's right? why I was like, he probably won't win this, so that's why. I, but, but, I, but the reason why I ask is those are my favorite Marvel characters. Right. Of, of all time. Um, this is like from my childhood. I take it from my childhood, and mm -hmm. I don't grow up, so I never... I, I never. Rogue would be up there as well. I love Rogue. Oh, let's yeah. add Rogue. Let's yeah. add Rogue to this. Go. Rogue's the best one. Good. I haven't I haven't used Rogue in a while, but um i remember her being really fun wolverine obviously has the whole thing where it's like he's healing if you play that card that lets you heal for the whole game he's healing after every villain turn so that's really handy spider-man is great because uh he's always giving tokens to everybody on the team so every time he does a thing you know i could move around the board and be like okay i'm gonna go do this and do that oh and here james aaron here's a token that'll let you do an extra punch next turn like, so Spider-Man's really good at just, like, helping his friends. Um, Rogue, I remember being pretty solid, pretty, like, ba like well-balanced. Like, you're never going to feel like you don't have what you want with Rogue. I don't remember how her specific powers worked, um, unfortunately, because I've only ended up, like I said, I always play random, so I only get who I get, right? Uh, and she's only come up a couple times. Punisher, he's a lot like Hulk. He deals a lot of damage, but, like, that's about it. He's not really good with helping out his buddies. Uh, a lot of the times, it's just Punisher has a lot of cards where he can like shoot a bad guy four times in a row, but his card doesn't give any help to the next player. His Punisher's that's Punisher, right? It's the Mac. Yeah. He's off doing his own thing. So it's if you want the answers to those questions, you like they did a good job of making you think like, okay, who would I want to be on a team with? And I think the answer with those five people is rogue and spider-man because yeah one of them is sexy and the other one's rogue um <laughs> that's why i didn't want to put spider-man in it though because it's so sexy no that's why i was like yeah. spider-man's kind of like spider-man spider-man obviously and rogue yeah. can absorb powers but those yeah those were uh those were always my favorite growing up i had the 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 trading cards the marvel trading cards and i bought comics and those were always my favorite Marvel characters. First time I got Punisher, I was seven years old and I read a Punisher comic. Wow, I'm sorry. I don't think that. Well, no, it wasn't a Punisher comic. It was it was Punisher, Spider Man, Kingpin, uh, Cloak and Dagger. And I'm on board what for was this. It called? It was, what was it called? Tale. I can't remember what it was called. It was my first non like I used to get like Transformers, He Man comics, and I was like, and I told my parents I'm like, I want a I want a real comic. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I want like Spider Man or Batman. Like, I want a real comic because mm -hmm. I'm seven. This is the 80s, right? And it was probably the year after you were born. It was the year after you were born, Andrew. That's how old this was. And it was my birthday. And I got, and my sister, who was a month old at the time, got me a comic. <laughs> and uh, hi, Dusty. My cat just came in. And I got this comic. And the first page of this comic is Punisher walking down a street and a guy and a, and a husband beats his wife. And so the 
The Punisher's like, I punish those who punish others. And he like <laughs> takes out the, the husband. And I was just like, um, I was I was uh seven or eight, and I was just like, This is the greatest thing. And then the comic kind of shifts gears a little, and Spider-Man shows up and Kingpin's there. And I'm like, why is this? And I knew Spider-Man, obviously, but I was like, what is going on? And that was like my first entry into Marvel. It was like all these characters, Cloak and Dagger. And it, and I still have the comic. I, the cover's ripped right off. I have the comic right beside me. Like I can't reach it, but it's in a closet right there. It is my favorite comic ever. It's probably not very good, but it was. it's just like... They're all in it, Andrew, and that was my first. So I became obsessed with Punisher after that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like eight years old, like the Punisher. Mom, I want a, a skull T-shirt, and she's like, no. And then I went to rent the Dolph Lundgren movie a few years later, and I had it in my hand at Jumbo Video, and this woman said, "Don't get that; it's uh -huh. terrible." <laughs> And my mom was like, "Well, you're not getting it." And I was like, "But what does she know? It's the Punisher." It was Dolph well, Lundgren's I, wife. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've never seen that movie still. It's the only <laughs> Punisher movie I've never seen. So <laughs> I've anyway, seen... sorry, I had to tell that story for some reason. No, I like that story. I'll I'll quickly follow it up with I, I've seen one snippet of that movie. Uh and I was at my dad's and like my dad had the remote control and he was channel surfing and he's like, Oh, look, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher is on. And he puts it on, and it's this like five minute scene of Punisher shooting up, I think like a casino, and like <laughs> from from the minute dad turned onto the channel like he's shooting everybody he's going and going and going and it's like non-stop <laughs> my, dad, my dad was like he's fine with violent movies like he doesn't care but like he got fed up and he literally like he changed the channel and he just goes i think we get the idea Dolph." <laughs> <laughs> that's like the um and uh, r.i.p uh to uh ray stevenson but his punisher movie is like insane you're just like what is happening here <laughs> the thomas jane one had that one was i kind of really appreciate that one because it a lot of the comics that i had it took things from those comics in that one um but it was they all they've all missed the mark the show i actually haven't seen the show me neither as i'm i want to so badly but i'm also like you know how i am with shows it's really yeah. tough for me and if and if my wife isn't into a show I'm someone who doesn't just watch it. So, but I will say this: if there's rumors that the Punisher is getting a, a Disney Plus show after Daredevil: Born Again, and I and I I didn't watch the Daredevil show either, and I love Daredevil too. And I I'll tell you, I got into Daredevil because a friend of mine when I was in when I was 12 in grade six, sixth grade, was obsessed with Daredevil. Daredevil, like I'm like what? Like no one talked about Daredevil in 1991 or no, two or didn't. three or whatever. No one talked about Daredevil. I don't even think he was on cartoons yet. And he was just like, I love Daredevil. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he gave me all these comics where he wore yellow. It was the first one I read he wore yellow. And and then I just was just like, this is a cool character. And I really kind of started to like Daredevil. And then we did this stupid thing where we traded comics. That was the biggest mistake I ever made was trading comics. Um, anyway, yeah. You know, and then X-Men, even before the, cart the 90s cartoon, it was hard not to love X-Men. There's just something yeah. about them that's so lovable um, that they did not tap into in the first movie, but like, there's something just so lovable about X-Men and I, I can't wait for the new cartoon and I can't wait for them to make their MCU debut too. Yes. And that's why I think I, that would be like, if I could get any pack, it would probably be X-Men because it has it. I think it does probably have the most interesting characters of all of them. Probably. I don't know. I could be wrong. It does. I think that uh, you're really gonna, you'll be happy if you get that box plus the Spider-Man box. Um, and I think if you order the Spider-Man one on Amazon, they throw in Dr. Strange. They do, randomly. Yeah. Yeah. They do, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. not bad. Dr. Strange is pretty powerful in the game too. But I think you have to buy that one with the first season one. I think you're right. Which I mean, which I'm okay you know, with. Like that's the guy. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm not, I wouldn't be like, Nope. Yeah. Honestly, the more villains you can get your hands on, the more fun you're going to have with the game. Like, because here's the thing, you say that, and that's true, because I'd probably want to play more villains, and I would probably always be Spider-Man. <laughs> like, I'd be like, like, those characters, those, those characters I just told you, if those were the only ones I had, I would never need another one in my life. Right. Like, and look, I love Iron Man, when Robert Dan I, I did like Iron Man growing up, I, um, 
but he was always i didn't like him as much as daredevil like he was always just like that tier below daredevil and robert downey jr obviously destroyed it like just crushed the heck out of that role and uh arguably the best mcu movie still is that still a thing or is endgame or infinity war like they've trumped it now but iron man one if it wasn't as good as it was and robert downey jr wasn't good he was it probably wouldn't be an mcu today no and we probably wouldn't even have this because this That's was 100 percent so reactionary even though the developers <laughs> say we're going by the comics Sure you are. <laughs> Maybe in seasons two and three, but in season one, it was literally MCU the board yeah. game. Like, let's be real. So. Which I, but it's funny because you say that, and that to, to me that makes sense because that Guardians of the Galaxy game came out, and people, or no, the Avengers game, the play, the the video game, Avengers video game came out. I've never played it, but everyone's like, "Why don't they just look like the movies?" I'm like, "Well, they're based on comics." Yeah, <laughs> like they're, they're based on. I I don't. It's this game. Like I said, I'm going to eventually get it. Actually, my birthday is coming up. I did not ask for it, but I should. Ooh, I should go. tell Aaron that I want this game. Because I, I had a blast playing it, and it's the kind of game where because it's so short, you could just be like, like on a summer night outside by the fire with a light on, honestly. She's like, let's play this game quickly. All right. And you play the game with a little cocktail. And you yes. just and it's just like, it would, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it was, I don't, like I said, I don't play a lot of board games, but it was definitely one that it had it, 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 an impression was made for sure. And I think I do think about it. I'm like, man, I kind of want to what it be because I'm babbling. But like, you know, I'm married and we have we have a daughter. She's she's going to be nine months soon and she sleeps at night kind of. And so like you put the baby in bed. It's like, you want to watch a movie? Huh? Like, because you know me, I watch the same five movies because I don't want to pay attention. But if it was an hour board game, I think this was, it was like, let's just pull out this game and play this game. Let's play the game. This is like, I don't know. I, I do. I, I There's a lot of times when I'm like, I think this game would, the value would, it would be valuable for, to own Marvel United. So it thank would. you for that. No problem. I'm really glad you and Aaron enjoyed it. I mean, I as far as I'm concerned, yes, I bought a lot, but it's already paid for itself because I've played it over 200 times now and i <laughs> that's not exaggeration i keep track because i'm a weirdo so like the the purchase th that you're getting versus the value you're getting for that purchase like you can't go wrong you the really problem can't. is i'm too late to the game for if there was a season four i would if there was a season four andrew and it was i don't know what your uh, we won't get into that yet because we won't um, but if there was a season four and it was anything that I just said that I like was involved in some capacity, uh -huh. I might be like this. I'm in on this Kickstarter. Now there, there probably would be some like the Sentinel one. I don't know if I'd be so in on a Sentinel one necessarily. Not that I don't like Sentinels, but if I'm going to get in now, I have to get in. Uh, I think the this X-Men one would be perfect. And a Spider-Man would obviously be up there, but which one would you recommend for me if I could find it for a value? Uh, if you could find an expansion for value, Sinister Six, 100%. Because it's six villains, right? But So that already is like six different games, but also there's a seventh game in there because you can fight them all together as the Ooh. Sinister Six if you're feeling suicidal. And this then the classic Sinister Six? They are the classic comic Sinister Six, yeah. And there's also, I can't believe I didn't mention this yet, but this, at some point this summer, they haven't said when yet, they're coming out with another core box that doesn't have a whole campaign or season behind it. It's just the core box on its own. And it's called Spider Geddon. And it's basically to cash in on the movie, right? You're getting um, Scarlet Spider, you're getting Spider Man Noir, you're getting Penny Parker, um, who else? Silk. Um, spider punk is in there spot uh anti-venom so you are you're getting a whole bunch of the spidey world when's there. it coming out is it kickstarter or like in the no, store it's going to be in stores they haven't said when they just said mid 2023 so if, if okay so mid 2023 who makes it what's the company that makes it they're called simon right there it stands for cool mini or not okay simon listen to me june yeah. 21 June 21 is basically the midway of the year. 
Mm-hmm. Save a few days here and there. That's my birthday. I'm thinking you drop it the 20th. <laughs> then I can <laughs> convince somebody to get it for me, my wife. That sounds cool. Maybe. Do you rec- Okay, do you recommend I hold off for that? I would say don't worry about holding off for that. Get the get what's no, out no, no, now. You're not listening. I can get one, Andrew. Let's. Oh, you can only get one. Um, <laughs> I have a wife and a kid. I can only get one. Yeah. Maybe I'll get more than one, but for argue for this right now, I can yeah. only get one. Do I hold off for that, or do I get the first season with the Spider-Man bundle? Those are my. And then like the rest are all just too expensive. So what am I getting? This is it's all on you now. It's going to depend my on my happiness is in your hands. It depends on how much variety you want. If you want more variety, get what's out now with the bundle because you're getting mutants, you're getting Spider-Man, and you're getting Doctor Strange thrown in there. Okay. Um, this spider getting box is literally just Spider-Verse characters. So you Who's want more villain? of that. Uh, there's four villains. Well, there's Spot and this guy called Morlin, who I don't know too much about. And then there's Anti Venom, who's an anti hero. Right. Okay. And Superior yeah. Spider Man, who is an anti hero. But there's Spider-Man. no like Green Goblin or Kingpin. Not in the Spider Geddon box, no. Green Goblin is in the main Spider Man box that you can get on Amazon. Yes. And that, Kingpin I, is only in this big fat box that I just showed you. I, the only reason why I ask is because if it's for the movie tie in, those two characters were in the first movie. So right. that's, why, that's why I'm curious if they would do that. So. I okay, so maybe I'll stick with my game plan because I, I the Spider Man box, I think it looks very cool, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love Spider Man, and you know, yeah, it does look like a lot of fun. You don't have it? No, because it's not out yet. No, no, no. the The one that is out is what I'm talking about. Oh, the one. Sorry, yeah, the yes, the one I you d- just talked about. I don't even know exists until right now. So I can't, yes, I, can't I do. I do have that one. Um, Green Goblin, I've only fought him once, uh, and it was so long ago I don't remember, but he's supposed to be one of the hardest in the game. Like, the Marvel United community kind of unanimously agrees, like, Green Goblin, like, he's so hard. Because he picks people up, James, and he puts them on his glider, and if you try to punch him, you're punching them, and they fall and they die. So, oh, yeah. Oh, my. (laughs) Favorite Green Goblin in a movie? Go. Um... Let, I'm gonna be cheap and say no way home. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spider-Man Two is what I would say is when he shows up in the mirror at the end. Mm. That was that made me so happy because I like it when movies have those continuities when you're like, oh yeah, just keep. Br-. I don't really care. Like, just keep bringing them back. Like, Lethal Weapon is the perfect franchise yes. because it's the same people that make them and show up in them and like joe pesci's in it he's like well he's gonna be the next one like if they make a five if chris rock is not in the fifth one why even make it why even make it like the minute you bring someone in you keep them in i love that renee yeah. russo in the whole time i just i love it man leave the weapon perfect franchise richard donner rest in peace apparently mel gibson if they do make a five is gonna direct it just saying perfect franchise richard donner is great with even the superman movies for all their faults they have great continuity like all four, like you can always count on Perry and Lois to be Perry and Lois, right? Like it, it never changes. It's it's a beautiful thing. Maybe one day there will be a DC United. Is that a thing? That sounds so familiar. Not James yet. Gunn. James hey, Gunn. There you go. We'll see. <laughs> you know, he. I was talking to Brock. Dude. I haven't seen Guardians three yet. You obviously have, and. and um, one thing I, I like, I haven't obviously I haven't seen. I saw the Christmas special, but the what I was thinking about James Gunn is I can't see the DCU being bad going forward because, of, like, just if you look at if you look at his his career, he did Guardians one, which was it kind of I think that blew everybody away. Like, it's hmm. just like what what the hell? And then Guardian two is really good. I think it's. I haven't seen it since the theater, to be honest. I think it's good. I don't know if it was as good, and it might have been, but it wasn't. It didn't come out of nowhere. Is part of the thing too, where it was like Guardians One came out of nowhere. You're like, how is this so good? Guardians Two, you kind of expect it. And I thought some of the songs in the soundtrack were, they just weren't as strong as one. <laughs> Whatever, who cares? But the Suicide, the Suicide Squad. 
I and this is my opinion, but when I watched it, I just felt like he was so dialed in to that movie. Like, cause you go watch a movie, you're like, ah, the director kind of lost it a little. Like you kind of feel like they kind of lose it a little. Yeah. But the Suicide Squad, I'm like, he's like, you just felt like everything was just like tight knit there, but organically tight knit. You're just like, man, he has got this. And and I haven't seen Guardians 3 yet. And I just kind of feel like if it's close to the Suicide Squad, I was suspected to be a little uh, even up a notch from that. That like he's really toned in, and I think that really helps with the producing aspect of what he's going into with DC as well with Safran. Is like if you're that dialed in while you're directing, you can be even more dialed in looking from above because now the director can focus on this, and you can be the George Lucas of Empire Strikes Back and worry about making it awesome. That's true. That's a good point. I never thought of. Um, he has that ability to take these giant bundles of characters and make them work. So uh, with Superman, it's going to be interesting to see how he focuses that on one person. Uh, yes. Superman's not really a team player most of the time. So uh, I don't think this is going to be a team kind of movie. So it'll be interesting to see how he does that. Absolutely. Uh, um, but I think he'll do fine. And I think he'll do fine enough that DC United is probably only five years away at tops. Would you get it? Would you be as on it? Look at are? me. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I have any more room to put it. Like season three is already stretching the amount of space I have. But um, if, if it's done right and it's compatible, you could finally live out your DC versus Marvel fantasies, right? Oh. Batman and Iron Man versus Darkseid. You know, again, I... Why can't you just do, like? I know why you can't, obviously, rights and all that, but why can't you? Why can't I feel like you could? I mean, you, I mean, you could anyway. You could just make Wolverine Batman. You could just <laughs> like Batman, Wolverine, you are now Batman. Batman actually would be more Punisher, I guess, because he has yeah. no powers and he's just and angry he's just... at people. Yeah, see, DC, DC is such a the the DC I don't know how we got to this but the DC stuff is very intriguing to me how to make it work because it's so very different from Marvel. Yes. Like Marvel was like I'm Stan Lee, here's like he did like 90% of those. <laughs> they all kind of worked in they're like we're all in New York and DC is like, "Well, I'm just a dude in a bad suit. Well, I'm from another planet. Well, so am I." And it's like and I shrink and you're like, "What is happening?" Like mm -hmm. nothing makes sense in DC. So in terms of like uh, connect, like they make like connecting is fine. Like when Batman meets Scooby Doo, you're all in because it makes sense. But above that, I don't really know how you, what you what the logic is. But Andrew, I know we're not talking about this, but do you think because superhero fatigue we talked about, we don't like the word whatever, whatever. And I think uh, Into the Spider Verse is going to make a ton of money, and Guardians Three kind of proves that because it's made seven hundred fifty as of this recording, I believe, million dollars. Um, and I, so I think. I, I think superhero fatigue only exists uh, when they're not good. But <laughs> how, how do you do? You think people will be sick of Batman when that his Batman movie comes out, which could be directed by Andy Muschietti from The Flash? And the reason why I say this is because we go Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, Pattinson, Pattinson. Then we go. Then we go Ben Affleck. Michael Keaton, <laughs> Pattinson, and then new Batman. And and the reason why that's why I asked though is like at some point someone's gonna be like, what? Like is a you and I won't, but the average movie guy, they're gonna go like, what the hell is going on? Like I just watched Batman. Now you want me to watch Batman, but it's a different Batman. I can't handle it. Like th I think that's a possibility. I think the average moviegoers will, of course, but the average moviegoers are probably not diehard Batman fans, and I think Batman fans know what's going on. They'll understand. They'll, but they're they not watch the ones, you. But but that's what I mean, though. Is is the money? Like they're, it's like Star Wars, right? You make the fans are going to show up. Like that's money. But yeah. when you make the real money, you have to get the average fan, the moviegoer, to go in. And if there's too many Batmans going on in a short period of time, are they going to be like, what? You just made me sit through this Batman for four and a half hours where he fought, I don't know who. Condiment but, King. 
Condom and King and the Joker was behind bars again. And now you want me to go into this one where he has a son who's bad. I, I, I just, like, I'm just, I just feel like Joker, I think you can get away with, but Batman, the Matt Reeves Batman, and you know, I love that movie. I don't think the further it goes, that one might be a, a mistake for DC films to somehow figure it out. If they keep it very dark and noir and the new one looks action packed, you can separate, but I don't know. It just, unless you end the Reeves verse after the second one, which could be the case. It just too many, too many Batmans at once. I just don't think it's healthy. I think as long as each one of them has its own identity and sells itself on the merits of its own identity, because if you're going to have that many Batman, then it becomes almost in and of itself a genre. And you could say that of the whole superhero, you know, franchise in general. Uh, for example, my mom, my mom loves the movie, The Book Club, right? Uh, that's a Jane Fonda movie. Um, I think Diane Keaton is in it too. Um, but I told my mom about the movie 80 for Brady and I'm like, you might like this. It's almost the exact same group of people kind of. Um, but she was like, that one doesn't interest me as much because it's about football. It's yeah. still a comedy about four female friends, uh, senior citizen female friends who are just having some laughs and getting together and, you know, being funny and sassy and silly. But one of them has the identity of it's a book club. We're doing this. Yeah. We're doing that. We're talking about books. The other one has the identity of let's go watch an NFL game. And it sells itself on those identities. And she can differentiate and be like, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like that one. So I'll stick with this one. Superhero movies just have to keep doing that. Sell yourself on the identity of I'm this wild animated film about Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and I'm going to blow your mind with my visuals and attract the crowd that's into that particular thing. Batman, uh, Matt Reeves, I think worked because it sold itself on being this giant noir detective story that goes back to putting Batman in a weird timeless space that seems ethereal and alien, which is different from what we got with Affleck and Bale. I think um, I love the Batman and I think it was the right play doing what they do. But I do think the new, the, the DC EU Batman has to be more fun. He has to be more. Um, and this might be good. This might be where it's good. Is like, cause I'm going to say this. It needs to be more child friendly. Like, kids need to want to be Batman for Halloween again. Like, when I was a kid, I was Batman for Halloween. I was mm -hmm. Adam West. Like, Batman. Because Batman was my favorite. Like, Batman, he needs to capture children again. I think a lot of DC does as well. Like, DC as a whole, I think, has to as well. And I'm a huge Snyderverse fan, too. Um, and Man of Steel is my... Man of Steel is probably my one or two favorite comic book movie ever. Like, I just freaking love Man of Steel. But it does. It's like kids. I'm not gonna be like, "Hey, kids, let's watch Man of Steel," and they're like, Yay! "This is so much fun." <laughs> it's just, it's not. I mean, the only. I mean, I wouldn't make them watch Bat Superman Returns either. I'd make them watch Superman, Superman Two, and then maybe we go with three and four. Right. But like, but like Superman Returns kind of sucks. But like, um, Man of Steel. I, I love what they did with it. Man of Steel is also a movie that came out at the wrong time. Like, it was like, yeah. people love the Dark Knight. Like, let's do it with Superman. And then Iron Man came out, like we said, and, and Incredible Hulk. And everyone's like, we've changed. And the <laughs> DC, DC is like, frick. But we haven't. And they're like, well, we have. We want them to wear shiny clothes again. And you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, well, if Superman eats a shawarma at the end, we'll all be happy. Hey, That's who knows? Maybe because he's got a kid, Batman's going to be lighter in tone. Maybe he's even going to wear the blue and gray. He won't wear the blue and gray, but because <laughs> I'll never get that again. That was the Batman. I was blue and gray Batman. He'll never wear that. I thought Affleck would, uh, but he's not. Um, if he does, I'll eat my words gladly, but I don't think so. But I think he will be lighter in tone. Uh, it'll still be a little darker than Superman or whatever, but I think it'll be lighter in tone. And I've got to be honest, I, I don't, I can't see Spider, I don't think I'm going to get to see Spider-Man in the theater. And I don't, I, but I really want to somehow see The Flash because I'm very excited. Uh, and I was, it was weird because was, I was excited that I wasn't. And now I'm like, I kind of want to see Michael Keaton again as Batman on the big screen. 
It would be awesome. I because I I I saw the first Batman in the theater, but on a re-release in the late two thousands with Rob. It was like a five dollar movie around Christmas, but I never because I was uh, eight years old when it came out in the theater, mm-hmm. and I remember being a. In... Oh. We just lost your audio, sir. Nope. This sounds like the work of the Joker. (laughs) Don't get around right now. There we go. There we go. I hear you now. So I don't know what happened. Yeah, no. So I I was just, I'm really looking forward to it. I love Batman. And sorry, Marvel United, though, is, uh, it, it could it could be my favorite board game that I've ever played. It's definitely mine, and I'm glad you feel the same way. I'm glad you and Aaron enjoyed it. All my friends enjoy it. Maybe one day, um, in a perfect world, uh, oh my God. If, if they get the DC license, um, imagine a box that is uh, all the different Batman. You want to be Keaton? You want to be Clooney? You want to be Bale? They're all in there, and they're all they're all dis- written like drawn like this. Yeah. Wouldn't that be That'd a beautiful be awesome. world? It'd be so awesome. I think Affleck's still my favorite Batman. That's why I can't wait for the Flash because he has like one scene. I'm like, apparently he's really good in it, so I'm like, I want to see that because you know, like honestly, I think um, like Michael Keaton is probably my favorite movie. Although I always say Batman Forever is my favorite, but I think the first Batman is still there's just something nostalgic. I think for me for that time. And that's, I think that's what really trumps everything else now is like the nostalgia that I feel for it, which I hate admitting that, but it is what it is. Um, But Affleck, I just feel like that Batman might be my favorite. I don't know. My favorite movie is the is the Batman. Same. Yeah. But I think Mm -hmm. Affleck's that. Like like the Batman is probably my favorite, but Batman eighty nine is like my go to because, and I find myself I bought it on digital years ago. I bought all four of them. The original Batman's for nine ninety nine on iTunes like ten nice. years ago, and remember five years ago, and so I just like I'll find my, it'll be like like I said I watch one movie all the time and the that Jack Nicholson Joker movie is the one that I find myself of all the Batman movies that have been made the one that I go to very frequently like it's like I just I'll put it on without even thinking about it half the time I'm like this is just like this is just a freaking good movie <laughs> and I'm just like. Damn, this is a good movie. And I have the soundtrack on vinyl by Prince. So good. I miss that Gotham so much. I yeah. really miss that Gotham yeah. City. One day we'll get it, was, it back. It wasn't as good. And I don't think Gotham was as good in Returns. I thought it was better in the first one. I have to see Returns again. It's been a long You time probably would like Returns, returns more because it's a little more zany. But I think it's a little more reserved in the first one. And I loved it. Yeah. So good. Do you have any final thoughts on Marvel United, James, before we wrap up? Yeah, I got to now figure out if I should get this stupid Spider Man box in the summer. Thanks a lot for that. You're welcome. No, I I do think um, I'm going to, I'm I'm going to get it eventually because I do love it. I just have to figure out which is the best one to start with at an affordable price. And it's looking like the first one with the Spider Man expansion. Seems to be it. Now the first one, the first season, I guess, the first box yeah. is very affordable. Very affordable yes. to buy. Yeah, especially compared to the other games you've brought over. Very affordable. Uh so I'm also tempted just to get that. But then if you don't get it with that Spider Man expansion I want, it's like that Spider Man expansion separate is almost the same price as the two of them combined. Yeah, it's just a whole thing. Um, let me know when season four Kickstarter kicks in if they do it because I might get in on that gravy train. Do it, and maybe they'll have some back order ones you can do because that's what happened with me. I missed season one completely, season two caught my eye, and luckily it had all of the season one stuff in it that you Uh, could order. So I was like, Yes, please. Yes, that'd be great because I I think the X Men one 100% I'd be in on because I love. 90% 90% of the X-Men characters. Except I hate you, Juggernaut. Oh, he's a meanie. He's so I, love, hard to I, do, I love Juggernaut. I love Juggernaut in X-Men 3, X-Men 
Is that uh, you, what's the third no, one called? The Last Did, Stand. The, la- <laughs> the Last Stand until Part Four. Uh, right, Juggernaut's my favorite X Men villain, so I was very happy. I love. I do love. I think my favorite X Men villain is uh, well, it could be Juggernaut actually. Saber is up there. Juggernaut. Um, it's definitely not Magneto. He bores me. <laughs> Who's that he's better group? in the movies than he is anywhere else, Magneto. At least I find. Like in the cartoons, he was pretty one note. Yeah, but, that's why I don't like him because he's. Yeah, you're right. He is better in the movies. Yeah. I've always liked Sabretooth and Juggernaut, and there's somebody that I'm not thinking of right now. Definitely not Toad. I hope it's not Apocalypse because he's really one. No, too. I don't really care about Apocalypse either. But yeah, those two. The man that apocalypse movie was bad. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty rough. It's okay. Oscar Isaac is gonna be fine. <laughs> well, thank you so much, James, for joining me on this casual Friday. Uh, I'm glad that you had a ton of fun with this game because I've been having a ton of fun with it. And, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, I know our viewers are excited for uh, like the ones the Marvel United people are excited for it to come in the mail. So. Hopefully we can make their wait a little bit shorter as we just talk about it all year long till next March. Ah, yeah, keep milking it. That's all we can do at this point. It's March. You get it in March? Late March if all goes well and there's no delays or Okay, there's no way that they start like kicks are like we're not going to make this. Like they knew they were going to make it, right? Like yeah. there's no there's no way they're like we're not going to make it. How could they not have it ready already? Usually what they do I think is they have the core box ready. And then they show that off because they have like videos of people playing yeah. it. And then everything else is like, you want all this to be real? Donate. And yeah, but I mean, how they met their goal in what seven days? I think this one. Yeah, like eleven minutes. Yeah, so they know they're going to make the goal. It's just <laughs> yeah. make, them, just have it ready to go. March. That's ridiculous, man. March. Yeah, it's a have, long wait. You can have a kid in that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I like keeping the hype alive so the hype doesn't die down so that by the time March comes, we're just like fuel. Yeah. I'm kind of glad you did these videos because I didn't know what the hell you're talking about. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, doesn't he have the game? I'm like, yeah, talk about the game that you have, I guess. Um, but, but the thing with this, I mean, no one's watching that, but the thing with this channel is is Digital Shark. Could we talk about what we like? And you're like, I want to talk about this game. And it's, uh, go for it. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Why not? This is where we get to talk about crap that we like. It's the only channel on YouTube where people are talking about things they actually enjoy. That's probably true at this point yeah. in time. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the the viewer count on this video will show that that's there's a reason why people don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this video should like Marvel United's gone woke. <laughs> More Goddamn. like Marvel She United. Am I right, uh... fella? I, but, oh, okay, wait, wait. So I haven't watched your Guardians three review yet because I haven't seen it, and I don't watch your did reviews I, until. I, did I make one? We, well, Infinity rewatch is what I'm talking. Okay, about. Infinity rewatch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't. I haven't watched it yet or listened to it because I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Um. But how would you rate it? Like, just give me a a, a spoiler free rating of it right mm. now, quickly before we wrap up. Oh boy, it's hard. To, I think it might be. I really liked it, and I think it's an absolutely excellent movie. But I, I personally think it might still be my least favorite Guardians, and that's not to say there was anything really wrong with it. That's just to say those were two previously very high bars that were set, and I still like them better. But that might change with time. Which is your favorite? Two. Yeah, two. I gotta rewatch two because I've heard a few people say it's better than one. Um, here's the thing: I I thought the opening song was a miss. <laughs> and two, I remember mm. saying like, yes, like because I I think I was like, I'm like they played Fox on the Run in the trailer for it, and then and that song, I don't know, maybe it was just me with that song and I'm going into it, but it just didn't have the the like Guardians one song. You're like, yeah, I'm in. Oh. I just didn't. <coughs> excuse me, the choke. It just didn't have that for me. I was like, uh, but I thought like ego was great. Like there was a lot of stuff I really loved in it. But I just thought there was a few. There was another song later on that I thought didn't hit for me anyway. The way that I thought it should have emotionally, and it, and then but the scene kind of 
requires it to, I believe, if I'm remembering the movie correctly. And so there's a few things. But one, I just think one was just such a surprise. Yes. And it was just such so much fun. Because two's not as much fun as one because it's got some more serious stuff going on. But like, yeah. but like one was just like a nice surprise. And it was so much fun. And I was like, I am all in. But two, I got to watch it again because I have heard it's better. And, and like when I think about it, I'm like, it, is, it feels a lot richer in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. Richer world building, richer storytelling. Yeah. Two got better literally every time I watched it. But I think that's the James Gunn trajectory that I was talking about earlier where it's like, he, like one is just, it's like, let's just call it the perfect Marvel movie, right? It's just like, you're like the freaking rock talking raccoon and a tree that says Groot. Like, you're like, but it's perfect. And then two, he's like, maybe it's not as perfect or whatever, but he's kind of grown as this mm -hmm. filmmaker. And then the Suicide Squad, he's grown even more. And I haven't seen three, so I can't comment on that. But I'm wondering if, like, he's growing in this way that... Or maybe he's just... He peaked with Suicide Squad, and and now it's all downhill. And... No, he's definitely growing in three. You will definitely see that in there. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I stayed away from most spoilers, but I did see one that pissed me off. Uh-oh. Yeah. And it wasn't... I, I don't follow anything to spoil. It was from something that shouldn't have spoiled it, and they did. I'm like, man... But I can't really complain because it's been out for like a month. So I'm like, yeah, they should have a different Twitter that's just like, I have a child. I can't see movies when I want to. Don't I show me was, anything spoilery. I think it was on my pizza party uh, Instagram page. Oh, and I don't no. follow anything but pizza on that one. So I always go to that <laughs> one because it's just pizza. And for some reason, like this, I, I won't say what it is now just in case anybody, but it was like his image. I was like, that's not pizza. Like it was the only thing that wasn't pizza when I was looking. I was like, you son of a Somebody was like, should you put pineapple on this? And another person responded with like, Gamora dies. <laughs> no, it, I wish it was that. <laughs> nah, that would piss me off because it was my, I purposely have my pizza one where it's just pizza. So if I want to avoid spoilers or anything, I just go on that one and I just see pictures of pizza, like people making pizza. <laughs> 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 It's kind of ridiculous, but yeah. Uh, follow me, Rosile Pizza Party on Instagram for all of your pizza needs. And spoiler needs, apparently. I wish I took pictures of those pizza I made when you were over, man. Those were some good those, pizza. Those are delicious pizzas. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Andrew Fantasia. And you can also get my books, We Were Wizards, right now on Amazon. Here's one of them right here. Uh, this is the hardcover version. You can get ebooks and paperback as well. I have them both, and you signed them for me. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. The value has depreciated now. <laughs> uh, my book is coming out, by the way, Andrew, if you were interested. Finally! In finally coming out. And... <sighs> Sometime, you, if, you, if you're a backer of it, you'll get it in June. Everybody else will get it in like uh, six months or something stupid. But... And Scorsese's already got the movie rights. But dude, by the time this book comes out, Pacino and De Niro will have another kid. <laughs> that poor child. <laughs> I know. That poor child. It's kind. Of, it is sad though. Like they're gonna grow up probably without a father. Let's like you know yeah. what I mean. Like it's. I don't know. I think even though it works, there should be an age where like maybe we shouldn't have kids. <laughs> like maybe they'll live forever. I don't know. They're Hollywood. Who knows? They're AI probably. They probably are. Oh, boy. All right. Thank you, sir, for joining me on this casual Friday. Thank you, everybody, we for watching. We did go over a lot, but them's the breaks. <laughs> it's all my fault. And this game's a lot of fun, man. Whatever. It is. It really See, it's just like playing the game. Time goes by, and, like, before you know it, you've tackled four different villains. All right? So what do we got there? Lights? Yeah. Oh, now you look, like, you look like Palpatine again. <laughs> Oh, Jedi. A communications disruption could mean only one thing. Invasion. Invasion. Great movie. Great line. Star Wars United coming 2029. Sayo Sio Bibble needs uh, to be in. I think he should be in the sequels. I Sio, think they really uh, missed the mark. I blame J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Colin Trevorrow's was going to be the rise of Sayo. Uh, yeah. He was, I heard he was going to be in it. He was going to play Ray. Oh, damn. Imagine if Ray, Ray your, 
your father, your grandfather was Sio Bibble. She's like, I knew it. Oh, I'm a Bibble. Ray Bibble. Ray Bibble. Wow, they really screwed the pooch. <laughs> all right, sir. Well, it's been a slice. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see you all here next time. Until then, may you be the masters of your own universe. <laughs>